which one is this ice cream truck now? This ice cream truck did not pass me so. It's when I managed to gather myself to record this video, that's when the ice cream truck is passing. My love. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is a Sunday and I'm going to have to get a blanket because I'm not about to make myself sick. I just got back from church and I just done a bit of work and I said, you know, let me jump on my YouTube channel and do this video on this topic that I thought about earlier. So we're going to be talking about rights, privileges, expectations and entitlements in relationships. And we're going to talk about it from friendship. I haven't even dipped this topic, you know, in depthly, but I'm just going to be speaking from my heart and hope you guys enjoy this video. I know I have a lot of people watching my video now because, or subscribe to my channel at least, you guys always stop me in city center, even in church. You say, oh, I follow you. Please, if you're watching this video, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Share all my videos that any, okay, not all. Any one of my videos that you found useful, share it so that this community can grow. YouTube is very different from Instagram. So it's not as, um, it's not like Instagram. When you leave me a comment, I can like it. Or I can, it's not, YouTube is not like that. I literally have to open my laptop or check the YT Studio app before I see any notifications. So we're going to do that first. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, let's get right into the video. This topic can actually cut across all types of relationships, marriages, um, family dynamics. But I understand that people's situation, dynamic circumstances are very different when it comes to marriage and also when it comes to family. So I just like to focus on friendships, platonic friendships, not the friend that maybe gave you a kidney last year. <laughs> not friendship that there's already too much with or not that type of friendship, platonic friendships. So you know these days we are in an environment where everybody I consider it uh, we are a little bit more sensitive to people's feelings. We're more sensitive to um because of social media actually people are a bit more vocal about how they feel sometimes people don't even tell you how they feel about you but then you go online and you see a similar scenario and then you can now put yourself in the shoes of what whoever you had dealings with you know felt but i find that in this day and age where you know you're not even sure what to expect um from your friends and i said you know well, let's do this topic and i'm going to put it into context for example you know Maybe it's your friend's birthday or your friend's, um, maybe child's birthday and, you know, the, the friend is upset at you because you did not wish them happy birthday or because you did not send a well wish or even a gift and they take offense and they just give you a safe distance. Is that expected? Is that a right? Or are they being entitled? <laughs> Hi, baby. Mommy wants to film a video. Do you want to sit down with Mommy? You just woke up? Did you sleep up? It's not this one. Sorry. How are you? Okay, so let's film our video together. Do you want to say hello, everybody? <laughs> you say hi, guys. Hi, oh, guys. <laughs> okay, so um, do you have expectations when, um, you know, in those kind of sit situation, or are you being entitled? <laughs> Sorry, baby. I like something. Yeah, but you know, you have to keep quiet so that mommy can talk. Personally, in friendships, I'm going to talk about what I think friendships are and what my own personal expectations are in a friendship. So if I say someone is my friend, I'm not talking about acquaintances, I'm not talking about people that we go to church together, we attend the same program or course. I'm not talking about people that they have my number, I have their number, I call them to talk to them. They know personal things about me that I don't share publicly. We have, you know, over the years built trust integrity there's reliance i know that i can rely on this friend you know this friend if she does if i if i for example if i'm mia for three days i know this person would check on me that is what i consider a friend to be so in that kind of situation what are my expectations in that friendship i expect loyalty i expect and when i say loyalty it's not like we cannot share friends we all we i mean i have <laughs> so many people in my life but loyalty in the sense of when i tell you something I expect that um, it stays between us, especially when it's confidential. One, I expect that um, you're honest with me, you're able to give me feedback. I have a video on um, what to expect from godly friendships or something like that. I'll link that video somewhere here or here. I think the title of the video is how to measure if your relationships are godly, yes. You know, I expect loyalty, I expect everything I shared in that video. I expect that, you know, integrity, there's integrity in that video. I expect that when you tell me A, it is A. 
and this is now expectations i don't expect that you're lying to me i don't expect that you are you know embellishing information i don't expect that you are even withholding information that could be of value to me i don't expect that you'll be tailgating information so that's another thing i also expect good wishes and well wishes and if i have a friend and i feel like him um, you know you've never said anything encouraging to me you've never you know tried to you know build me the bible says we're building up one another I would not consider that person my friend. I mean, I expect that my friends wish me well. And this might not necessarily be, you know, expressed in words because we have different personalities. But I expect that by your actions, my friends, you know, they support me, they wish me well, they, and this is not just one way. Whatever I'm saying that I'm expecting is also what I believe that I invest in my friendships. Because I find it very weird that people that usually cry foul are actually the most list giving people people that always say oh nobody's you you that you're complaining how many people have you helped how many people have you supported how many of your friends have you added value to you know so these are things that i'm saying that i know that you know by the help of god okay i'm able to invest in my friendships and obviously i should expect that in return it's just in any loving relationship where love is the you know center of that relationship not envy not subtle competition not um you know, there's some relationships that there's just animosity, you guys. You're not enemies, though. There's no, there's no grudge, but there's just animosity. Like, you, you guys are going out together. You're doing things together. But deep down, you're not honest with one another. You guys are competing, you know, silently. You are not, you just, to be honest, that person is not just your friend. But you're just packing yourself together. Not those kind of relationships. I mean, a loving, healthy friendship. These are things that I don't think is too much to expect. As I said, loyalty, integrity, confidentiality, um, well wishes. You should wish your friends well, support them, look out for them, give to them, give your time, give your emotional support, give your resources. You don't have a right when it comes to another person's life. But I would say that um, even in friendships, there should be a level of understanding that some things are okay and i'll give some scenarios when i was pregnant i have this lovely friend in my city and she'll call me anytime i'll call her anytime and i remember that after church i'm always extremely tired i don't want to go home i don't want to cook i don't want to do anything i'll just call her are you at home i'm on my way to your house and she'll be like oh yes come and i'll come to her house she'll keep me company and her husband i will stretch my legs like i was heavily pregnant she will cook for me there was as in i can't at least five occasions that that happened when I was pregnant and in hindsight when I gave birth just many months after and I thought to myself that what if this girl just thought you know why is this one always coming to my house but it just I knew that she would never think like that because we give each other that level of love and openness in the friendship so it's not a right but it's an access that she has afforded me for being you know her friend and i appreciated that obviously and i'm sure that i mean this is someone that i have babysitted a child before i would do 10 times above for her as well so that's aside so now when does entitlement come in i think entitlement comes in when there's lack of respect and understanding and even in the most loving relationships entitlement can set in entitlement for me means when you are not putting yourself in the other person's shoes you're not being considerate Sometimes you're being borderline disrespectful. <laughs> Bless you, baby. Sometimes it could be um, you just, um, you know, taking advantage of the person's kindness or benevolence. It's like maybe a friend is always taking jabs at you and you just laugh it off. And, you know, you don't, you don't, and the person keeps doing it. After a while, bless you, if you know what you're doing, you have to get rid of that relationship because the person is not reading the memo. Yes, you're not complaining, but because you haven't been, you know, upfront and telling them that, you know, this thing that you do, I don't like it, it will begin to irritate you. And the devil is wicked. Small thing like this, it will blow it out of proportion. And before you know, other things that the person does that were never an issue for you will now start becoming, you know, a big deal. And before you know it, the relationship will fizzle out. So, but with entitlement specifically, I'll give scenarios of what people term entitlement. And I'll, I'll like you to think and ask yourself, is it really entitlement? So I saw a post earlier and I was talking about how, you know, oh, it was my wedding anniversary and she watched my Instagram stories and they should actually send you a message that, oh, happy wedding anniversary or happy birthday. But I think that's an unfair body to put on somebody. This is just me speaking. See, my friends, when they do birthdays, my good friends, I will always ensure that I call them 
on their birthday because I love them. I send, I'll send, i send a voice note of prayers if they are unavailable because, you know, during birthdays, people get calls from everywhere. They might be talking to their spouse, their boyfriends, their parents might be, you know, praying for them, whatever it is, before I then I'll go on social media and post. So even if I don't post on my page, they won't take offense or I assume they would not take offense because I have already wished them happy birthday in person. I find it very weird that you put an unfair expectations on your friend that you feel like the yardstick for that friendship is to wish you or give you well wishes on social media, right? It's different if you say, oh, you didn't call me all day. But if you ask me on social media, okay, you knew it was that day, you, um, you just skipped it. Have you asked yourself that every event of your life, have you always been present? Have you always given the will? What if they were busy? And I think that boils down to, you know, well wishes for your friend, like um, making excuses for shortcomings. We should not have friends that we need to hold them to ransom to the point that the person is now telling you happy birthday because they know that if they, do not tell you, if they don't tell you happy birthday, you would likely take offense. You have taken away from the genuineness of that congratulatory message. You are taking away, it's not like people are almost, you know, ah, she will take offense, so if you don't do this for her, she will be angry, like, or he will be upset. I mean, I don't want to limit it to one gender. You see what I'm saying? We should not be in a position where, or we should not put ourselves in a position where, when our friends, you know, have to do things for us, it's almost like we're putting an imaginary gun to their head because they, we now, or we are even celebrating them because we want them to celebrate us on, the, on our own days. That doesn't make sense. I feel like any relationship where it's almost tit for tat, that relationship is not going to stand the test of time. Another scenario that comes to mind is, you know, having expectations from your business expectations that will bring you profit from your friends and not willing to remunerate them. Right. So I'd done it really a while back and someone said, um, and I said something about how, you know, be kind to your friends in service industry. You can't form a bridal shower group or a, or a um, baby shower group, for instance, and then maybe one of your friends is a baker and everybody, you know, is um, not contributing or they are contributing maybe their time or 10, 10 pounds or you guys have a levy for everyone to pay. And that baker is expected to contribute that levy. But because she's a baker, you guys will now say, or she makes food or a caterer, you guys will now say, okay, you, you're going to do the cake. Who's going to pay for all the produce that she uses yes it makes sense that she'd be like oh but it's her friend it's no big deal she's able to bake a cake for her birthday and she will still contribute the levy that everybody's let and um, you know put and it's not even fair if it's going to cost her 50 pounds to make a cake and everybody's paying 10 10 pounds you cannot have that sudden expectation from her this is something that she does for a living because you are her friend and this is me this is my thoughts you don't need to agree i feel this is where entitlement sets in when you have unfair, as I said earlier, unfair expectations on your friends. Like, you're not being considerate. And so, some people are happy doing it. Some people, are, I mean, if they had a supermarket and you, your daughter was getting married, would you go to a supermarket and say, okay, yeah, give me a bag of rice because I'm your friend? No. So why would you have the same expectation from a friend in a service industry? Oh, when you're coming, bring your camera so you can take pictures. Something that the person does for a living. So I feel like these are scenarios where even if you're friends with somebody, if you do it, please don't do it again. I, and I know that they might not complain. They might do it because out of love for you. But it's, it, it, it actually even solidifies the friendship. When I know that you are my friend, but you go on my website and you purchase products. You, are my, you don't even ask me questions. I just wake up and I see your order. You are my friend and you refer my businesses to people. You are my friend. You don't even ask me for discounts. I'm the one myself that will be like, oh, okay, don't worry, you're my friend. I'll do free delivery for you. Don't have expectations for people. And I'll talk about it on the flip side as well. I've been in scenarios when I know that my friends, you know, they do things. I would ask you, can you please send me your invoice? Many times they will say, no, don't pay. I will say, no, if you're not going to let me pay, I'm going to buy it anonymously. In fact, someone I know recently, she sells perfumes and all of that. And I try to, you know, engage. I share a post to people when I see it online. And I wanted to buy a perfume that she was selling, you know, just to support and patronize her. And she was like, oh, that should give it to me for free. I'm like, no, I don't want and I'm not going to give you my address. So I asked my other friend to buy it and I paid for it to my friend's account, right? And when I bought it, I was like, see, I've gotten my perfume. It's just a way to support your friends. Like... 
do not be entitled to the things that they do with their hands to earn money. So that's that on entitlement. Another thing I'll talk about is even privileges. I think it's just an offshoot on entitlement is when your friends do things for you, they look out for you, they call you when you're MIA, they give you mental support. When they when you when you withdraw, maybe you suddenly just withdraw, they are sending you a text message. It is a privilege. And don't take it for granted. I've been in a situation, and I'm going to keep it real. I've been in a situation where I have this, she's, to tomorrow, she's one of my best friends. But when she's having maybe personal things in her life, she withdraws. And I'll keep checking up, sending her messages, you know, how are you doing? But she could be very distant. And to be honest, I because I love her, I keep keeping up, keeping up. But last, I think late last year, yeah, in 2022, that kind of episode came up again, but even me myself, I was not even in the best mental state of mind. I was stressed, you know, I was, it was really, I was just busy. I was tired. I think, you know, I was breaking out. I was just stressed that period. So when I texted her and I said, oh, how are you, babe? You know, and she did not, I'm like, you know, me, self, <laughs> even me, self, I need, I need support. I need mental health support. So definitely. You don't want to take a misuse the opportunity. When your friends call you, I'm just don't say oh, this one is calling me again. There are people that would give an arm and a leg to have someone check up on them when they are not when they are MIA. There are people that would give you see the love that your friend is showing you that might be like ah, this girl, she's so expressed, she used to choke me with love. There are people that would die for that level of compassion. So people let's say, ah oh, God no bless me, good friends. Yeah. Go and check outside. You know, the, when you when you go and see what is outside, that's when you know the value of what you have. You know, friends that they genuinely care for you is such a privilege. The privilege that your friends shop for you, your sister is getting married, they travel down to, with you to another state, sometimes even another country, you know, to celebrate you. They are going to Nigeria. They are happy to buy you things, you know, or they even take things down for your family. It's so, I, these are things that I personally don't take for. In fact, if you do something for me, I would say, I'm so grateful. Thank you very much. Don't take it for granted. Don't have lewd expectations and still abuse the privilege that you have from friendships. See, a friend that puts you on, on things that, see, I have a friend that she signed up to one bank app and they had good interest rates if you are saving there. I think it's the Chase one by, um, I think it's now 2.9%. She called me, she was like, ah, sis, I put money here and this is what's happening. Instantly, that same night, I opened the account, I sent money there as soon as they approved me. It's, it's such a privilege to have friends that put you on. See, I bought the shares a year ago and it's doing well. It's not just mundane things. It's not just, ah, they are doing sale in Zara. They are doing, mm -mm. no, those, those ones are, they are good to please don't, so that I don't belittle it because we're in different stage. Everyone, I mean, different stages in life. Not just that, you know, important things. It is such a privilege. There's so many ways in which that we are blessed as humans. Some people are blessed with the gift of people. I consider myself very blessed with the gift of people, not just monetary things. So when God has um, blessed you with people and friends, I think it's also your responsibility to manage that friendship resource well. Know when to have genuine expectations. Know when to communicate grievances. You know, I was talking to my friend yesterday and we kind of alluded that, you know, sometimes, yes, people will hurt you. Friends will even do things that you'd be like, how can you say you're my friend and you did this, you knew this happened to me and you didn't even reach out, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then when you look at things holistically and say, you know what, I've known this person for 10 years. This is the first time they've done something like this. It's negligible. Yes, the weight of it might seem so much. I'm not talking about grave things. Maybe the person defrauded you or, you know, sconed your... No, not crazy things. Maybe just like a relationship, something that better communication could have solved. Just make excuses for that person and say, you know what? This is the only thing this person has actually done that actually got me so mad. Every other time, they are all, if I quantify the good things this person has done to this thing that really pisses me off, or even the bad things that they've done, it's, it's still not, it's like 80% to like 10% or 20%. It's negligible. So please, like if you have 80% in an exam, it is an A. Sorry, baby. It is an A. Like that's as excellent. You see what I'm saying? So nobody's perfect. You that you're always taking offense. People are always offending you. Have you ever sat down to reflect and say, perhaps... I have also been in that position where I've also offended people, just that people don't take it to heart the way I do. Just that people make excuses for me the way I haven't been, you know. 
So it's possible. So I just want to just encourage you. As I'm speaking, making this video, sit down, think about your friendship and say, you know what? What are my genuine expectations from this friendship? Where have I been entitled in this friendship? There's something I can apologize for. You know, one of my lovely big aunties here, she, she, she has taken me like a friend, but I took her like a mother. Her daughter wasn't feeling so well, you know, one time and they were admitted in the hospital. So I was like, you know what? I called her. She, I asked, I said, has she eaten? She said, she had not eaten. I was like, I'll come that afternoon. So I made food. I made like, this was like three years ago, but this, <laughs> let me just carry on. So I make coconut rice, chicken, drinks, everything. I put it in a bag. I work for myself. So, I mean, one hour out of my day is nothing to support a friend. And I took it to the hospital. And she, as soon as she saw me, she was so happy. I even brought fruits. We talked, you know, we looked at the daughter and um, she ate the food, right? And everything was good. And I took my empty container back home and I washed it. I think I even went to see them again the next day. So fast forward, maybe like a couple of months, you know, later, she now said to me that, ah, that she was just praying one deal, that he just came to her mind, that she please, I should not take this, you know, in any way, that she's so sorry, that she just realized that when I came to the hospital to give her food for her daughter, she just ate the food. She didn't even ask me if I was hungry. I was like, auntie, I, I've never even thought about it in that way. I felt it was even a privilege, like, to be able to even give to somebody. You know, but she was so, her heart was so pure towards me that she actually just thought, ah, did I, did I maybe, maybe I did not, you know, and we've been cool since then, I've not given her attitude or anything, but she just felt like, ah, let me check with, you know, Tosin and see if everything, and I just reassured her that nothing, absolutely. I didn't take offense, I didn't even notice until you said it now. And this also brings it to you, like, if there are even scenarios where you genuinely feel like, ah, maybe I offended this person, maybe I hurt this person. There's nothing wrong in actually reaching out to ask, actually when the love is there. There's only to self-preserve. See, I always say something that if you examine your life and you see that you have not had to say sorry to anybody in the last one year, check yourself. Check you. And you are relating with people on a daily basis because you're not perfect. You offend people. It's either you're not sensitive enough, people are walking on eggshells around you, or you are not, you don't reflect. And I don't mean sorry that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just, well, oh, I'm so sorry. How, as in, I didn't mean that. I apologize if it came off that way. You know, self, what's the English word? You're self-regulating just because, the Bible says that, see, if you're about to pray and you know that somebody may, you, somebody may have something, not like you are the one offending somebody, that somebody may have you in their hearts, go and make peace with that person before you pray. So I just want to encourage you with this video that, you know, friends are a resource that God has given us. In fact, I consider friendship the friendship resource. Like it is a, a blessing, of, the blessing of friendship. There are expectations, there are privileges, and there are entitlements. Just know what scenario to apply what to, and the Lord will help you. If this video, you enjoyed it, feel free to share your own personal thoughts, your experiences. I'll be reading in the comment box below. I love you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video as I enjoyed making it. And my daughter, she's made a good appearance today. I remember, do you want to say hello to everybody? Hello. Yeah, I say bye, guys. Bye, guys. Say subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> say like this video. Like this video. Thumbs up and say like this video. <laughs> like this. Just say bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Bye. Oh, what is this? Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.